Well, Merry Christmas, guys. I last year did a reading vlog during the week of Christmas. Last year I did Library Picks My TBR. I don't think I'm gonna do that this week of Christmas this year. I think I might do that in January, we'll see, because I really enjoyed that challenge, but I do have basically a week that's going to be very quiet and I think it's going to be a really good reading week. So I've already done all of my Christmasing. We did Christmas in our family the weekend before Christmas. And then my best friend was in town in the middle of the week for us to celebrate. And uh, I'll do some Zoom Christmas tomorrow because today is Christmas Eve. I'll do some Zoom Christmas tomorrow, but Really, it's gonna be very quiet. So I thought I would show you guys what I'm gonna be reading. I've got a lot in progress right now, and I just thought this could be like a cozy end of the year vlog situation. So what I have going current, well, let me tell you what I, I think I'm gonna read at some point during this week. One is Fat, A Cultural History of Obesity by Sandra L. Gilman. I'd really like to get to this this week. Um, Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is a small town contemporary romance. Friends to lovers, so hoping I get to that. And then in progress, I have Seasonal Work, which is a short story collection from Laura Lippman that I'm really enjoying, kind of just like getting to it slowly. I'm in the middle of The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb, which is a chonker and is gonna take me a while, has been taking me a while just because I've had a hard time focusing, but um, I'm really enjoying it so far, buddy reading this with Leanna, so I'm hoping I polish this off this week. But what I thought I would start with today is a book that I'm in progress on on audio, which is Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby, and I am loving this book. I'm reading this because it was in the Goodreads Choice Awards, and when I was doing a live reaction on Bethany's channel, someone in the chat said, oh, the audiobook is really good. If you're gonna read it, do it on audio. So I just got on hold for it at the library, and it came up. So that is what I'm listening to. It is so good. The audio is really good. I'm, I see why they recommended it, but the book itself I'm just really enjoying. So I'm gonna finish that off right now. It's Christmas Eve. Uh, I'll show you the tree and the simmer pot that I have going. So it's very cozy in here. I spent all morning in bed with the kitties snuggling, which was lovely. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna listen to my audiobook and I'm gonna do some pantry organizing. I, I Maybe I should show you the stuff that I got to organize with when I get to that part. I'm gonna do some pantry organizing because, well, frankly, I've seen a lot of them on TikTok and it's been inspiring me. With my autoimmune disease, I have just been having like a really complicated time with food for the last year because I've been on a couple of different diets from my doctor to try to, um, well, like there was like a transitional diet when I was still like really in a flare of the disease. And then now, since I'm in remission, we've been experimenting with a couple of different things. I've been trying to do gluten-free because they keep thinking I have celiacs, but I don't have celiacs but it looks like I have celiacs and I did so, I felt great on keto. So I've just been trying to cut down on my gluten cause it seems like I'm gluten intolerant based on what they're finding. So like, I don't know, my pantry, all that to say has been a mess and I've just been sort of like throwing things in there from different phases of food experimentation and I now, it feels stressful, I can't find anything. So I think I'm gonna listen to the audiobook and organize my pantry and also my freezer cause I did this already with my fridge and it really helped me feel like I was kind of clearing the decks and just like getting some space and organization. So I'm gonna do that with the pantry. So I thought we could do that while I listen to this amazing audiobook that I am enjoying so much right now. Underneath my tree is so sad now, guys, because I've given most of my presents out and I just have a few left that I've not opened from my mom, so it looks kind of sad under there. But you also can see, do you see that nice little uh, weight back there? I put that so that the kitties could not topple the tree over and it seems to be working pretty well. Okay, we got, we got simmering, simmering, smells delicious in here. We got the vibes going, listening to my audiobook, 
continues to be great. In terms of things I got to help organize pantry, I pulled like a bunch of things from around the house and then I got a couple of things last time I was at Target, which will be my last run for a couple of months, I think, while, you know, the Omicron of it all plays itself out. But I have like this little canister thing that I had, a couple of these. You're supposed to put flour and sugar, but I actually don't really like doing that in these. So I think I might use this for maybe like pasta, something like that. I've got this little spinny Lazy Susan stitch going on that I think could be helpful for a back corner. I got an expandable spice shelf thing for the corner of the pantry. So I'm, I wish that this matched the white of the shelves, but I liked that I could adjust it to the size that I need. So I think that will be good. I've got a couple of like just straight up like bins happening. So I think between all of this, I have some things to help with the organization. Yeah, we'll kind of just see how it goes. I don't really have a clear vision in mind. This is gonna be a little bit of like free balling until we figure out what is gonna work best for me. While I was organizing, look what showed up. By the time this goes live, the Book of the Month Club pick should be public. So I think I can show you guys what all is in here. We've got the Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. We've got Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. We've got, ooh, Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins, which I've already read. It is a genuine isolated closed circle mystery. So for those of you who are always on the hunt for that, this is that. Fiona and Jake by Jean Chin Ho. Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. Exciting, okay. And then I think that there is a book in this. So the bonus book, <gasps> yes! This is one of my favorite books of 2021. I'm so excited that this is one of the options. Ugh, such a good book. Okay, nice, Merry Christmas to me. trying not to cry at the end of the book. Um, I will tell you guys about it, but first, let me show you how the pantry came out. Um, it timed out actually pretty perfectly. So, this is not like perfect or anything, but this is so much more functional. I've got like drink stuff over there. Then I have like a variety of different kinds of snacks. Some of them are like bland, gluten-free, depending on like what the day is like. I've got them sorted. I've got my spices where I can actually see them. I've got like all the different sauces and oils and stuff here, medicine, some dry stuff, all of my stuff I don't use as much up there. So very happy with that. I had a lot of shame. I think that was keeping me from doing this because I know that I had like a lot of wasted food and I felt really ashamed of myself for that. It's something that I think now that I'm more used to having a pantry, I think I'm in a better place to make sure that I don't get into that same situation again because I can see what all I have. I have a lot of different options and things are much less likely, I think now, to be wasted. So I feel good that I worked through that feeling. Anyway, I finished it. It was really good. If you like a character-driven thriller, I think that this will really work. I think that this book would not have worked for me if it had not been two boomers at the heart of it, because there are some certain plot tropes and like beats that don't always work for me when the characters are meant to be my age, but worked okay for me because the two main characters are two older men. Both of them are ex-cons. One is black, one is white. Their sons were married and their sons were killed in what looks like it was a hate crime. Cops aren't doing anything about it and so eventually they decide to look into it themselves and they get entangled into a lot of different like bigger conspiracy type things. So it's like a revenge thriller married with sort of like a conspiracy thriller. So the plot stuff worked really well for me but the character work in particular in this is absolutely 
lovely. Ike and Buddy Lee are just, they're very flawed. <laughs> like they're, it's not like they're perfect characters, but they're very real. Yeah, I just, I have a soft spot for men with complicated relationships with their sons. That always makes me cry. And the ending of the book really made me cry. Sorry, I'm even just thinking about it. It's making me tear up again. Um, because they both have really complicated relationships with their sons because of their sexuality. And so I really liked that. <laughs> anyway, so um, I really, really like this. This is one of my favorite thrillers I've read in quite some time. So I really appreciate everybody pushing me to read it. I'm glad that it came up so quickly from the library. And I would definitely recommend the audiobook. I think that the performance is really nice. So <sighs> anyway, good tears, like emotional, good book tears. I guess I need to find something else to read. I think I'm gonna wash up a little bit and uh, I might settle in. Hmm, I don't know. What am I gonna settle in with? You'll find out when I do, I don't know yet. So we are well into Christmas day now. We did some present opening. I've been blinged out courtesy of mom like, whoa. Yeah, we had a nice little visit this morning. Santa brought her a lot of books. I know you were shocked to hear. I am a giver of books at Christmas. Me and the kitties are hanging out. I need to put their Christmas present together here in a little bit, but I thought I would check in because I am almost done with the Mad Ship. I've got, mm, I guess I'm like 80% of the way through. Such a good book. <laughs> Sorry, I can't even start to talk about it without crying. This is gonna be five stars. This is one of the best books I've ever read. I'm trying to think of how to talk about this without spoiling because if you've not read Ship of Magic at least, you need to read that before you can read this book. I have to tell you, I'm feeling very justified in how hyped this book was for me. I've literally read four gigantic tomes of books just so that I could read this because I just heard it hyped and I thought I was gonna love it. So like how to talk about this. Okay, so this book thematically is just about like women working within the patriarchy to find their place in the world. I love that. Um, it's also a lot about growth and evolution as a person. This sounds so generic, but like realizing things, I feel like Kylie Jenner, realizing that things that you thought were true might not be true and that that changes your own like self-conceptualization. Oh, this book kills me. It's so good. We've got dragons. We've got the titular mad ship Paragon, who is a sassy bitch. I absolutely love him. Well, I mean, and he, his whole story is heartbreaking. Like how do, I don't know how to talk about this book without spoilers. I will tell you Kennet, I think I mentioned to you earlier, Kennet is an interesting character and he's been, he kind of like was flying under the radar for me in the first book because I hated Kyle Haven so much. Kennet is a really interesting character because he, he's morally ambiguous, but I have have a feeling that I'm gonna end up hating him. Just based on the idea of like, part of what I think the moral of this book is, is to not just judge the outcome, but to judge the intention. And Kenneth does do things sometimes, like often that are aligned with helping other characters that I do like. He'll do things that it's like, okay, yeah, I like that. Like, I mean, I'm glad that he, you know, stopped Vivesha from having to be a slave ship in the last book. But I don't know, man. The charm doesn't like him, doesn't trust him, and I don't think I do either. So he's very interesting. He's very morally gray. Althea is the character that I feel the most connection with in terms of like, if I were a character in this book, I feel like I would be Althea. And I am into dilemma she is in. She's kind of in a love triangle. And I'm like hardcore team Brashen. Anyway, she's still trying to prove herself, so like, I think her finding herself as a woman and as a person is really interesting in this. Malta is insufferable, but she is also a child and she is definitely exhibiting a lot of growth. I'm very interested in that. Like I think she's reckoning with the rate, like she is basically growing as a person as she goes through this like courtship process and like understanding what it actually means, a political marriage or to be a, a daughter of a wealthy family or of a prestigious family. I think she had very romanticized ideas. We're seeing the rain wild perspective of things, which we, I, don't think we, I, we didn't have that in the last book. Like we didn't have like a direct POV there. So this makes me more excited to get to the Rainwild Chronicles to that little series. I feel like I'm all over the place. I just am loving this book. The characterization is just so good. It's so like the first book was good, 
but it it did have the thing that I have suggested in the past about the Robin Hood Hob books I have read so far, which is that I felt like the pacing was a little off. But now that we're in, like this one gets going straight out the gate. And once I hit like the 50-ish percent mark of this, this has been just nonstop action. So I think that this is gonna be my first five-star Robin Hobb book. This is definitely my, I'm not quite done, but I mean, I have like 20% left. This is my favorite book so far in the series. It's just really, really good. <laughs> I don't know, this is just like making me think a lot about things. I'm gonna finish and then I'll give you like my final wrap up thoughts, but this is definitely a big hit and definitely worth how many pages is this thing? It's 906 pages and it's like worth the journey. And it has been worth all of the pages I read up until now to get to this point. What a journey. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna keep going. I'll check back in when I'm actually done. And then I don't know what, I'm gonna have to have some palette cleansing time. It's probably gonna be a few days before I can dive into something else that's like substantial because this is just taking it out of me. So this is the kind of book that really takes you on a journey and like immerses you in the world. And I think it's just kind of hard to like come out of it. So I'm enjoying it, but wow, what a journey. It's so much. It's so good, but it's so much. Okay, I'm done. This is a chonky big, oh, sad. The cover's bowing a little bit. This is a chonky big boy. It did take me quite some time to get through this, but it was amazing. Five stars, unquestionably. Definitely my favorite of the Robin Hobb books I have read so far. I feel like I'm an incoherent mess talking about this. Leanna has not yet responded to the fact that I am done, and I need her to respond to me because I have so many things to say about this book or to talk about this book. I don't know. I feel like, how to explain? There are things about this book and the way that it plays out that you see it coming from a mile away, but it still feels satisfying the way it unfolds. That, and then there's also bits of it that I did not see coming, and I loved like the way things wrapped up. And I can't really get into any of that with you guys because this is the second slash fifth book of a series. <laughs> So if you haven't read it, I can't talk to you about it, but wow, this book is just, like I, I think I was saying in my last check-in, so much of this is about women reacting to the intrinsic violence of pa oppressive patriarchal structures. We have some amazing character development and character journeys. Paragon, a legend. There's not a bad plot line in this book. There's so many characters, if you can't tell, and all of the point of views are interesting, which is so rare for this many points of view. Kyle fucking Haven, still hateable. I mean, there's so many layers. This is talking a lot about, I mean, like I said, violent patriarchy, but then also like slavery, what s enslavement of different kinds does to people. I think that that is very interesting, especially vis-a-vis -vis what we're learning about the wizard wood. If you know, you know. I just love this book so much. Five stars, unquestionably. Definitely the best book I've read in quite some time. Cl a masterpiece, a classic. Read Robin Hobb just so that you can read this fucking book. It's so good. A huge success. I think I'm gonna take a palette cleansing read. Probably not tonight, but maybe tomorrow. I saw Honey Phillips has a new alien Christmas romance that came out. So maybe I'll read that as a little bit of a palette cleanse and to try to just reset into something a little more substantial. But my, my mind will be in Bingtown slash the Rainwilds on Vivacia and Paragon for quite some time. Amazing. Well, my Christmas spirit has ground to a halt because I did, so today was supposed to be my go hang out with my friend Jolene day because I'm gonna be hunkering down 
for the winter because of, you know, the state of the world. And uh, we were gonna go have fancy drinks together. I did take a test that was negative, but I have a fever, I have a scratchy throat, and somebody I was hanging out with in the last week just tested positive, so I may not be contagious, but I feel like it's not responsible to go out, so I'm really sad I'm staying, <laughs> and I really was looking forward to seeing her. We can reschedule, but I'm just sad. So yeah, I'm really disappointed, but it's part of being responsible in these times, so I'm gonna do a live stream, which was what I had planned. I guess I'm gonna film a couple videos, cause I look cute. If I do my makeup, I wanna shoot something if I'm not gonna go out, so I guess I will do that. And we'll just play it by ear. I will still get to see her, just not when I plan. That is my day. I guess that means that maybe I'll get a chance to read some more. If I do, I'll let you know. Well, hey there. It is the next day. I am feeling better. I'm very tired, but barely a fever this morning and no scratchy throat. So I'm thinking maybe I just was fighting off the plague. Um, I was doing some reading and I guess sometimes when you're fighting off a virus, you still have an immune response, which makes sense. Your immune system's trying to fight it off. So I think it did a pretty good job. Fingers crossed. I am pretty tired still. I think I'm gonna take a nap, but reading update. So. In terms of things I finished, I did read a nice palette cleanser yesterday, which was A Gift for Nicholas by Honey Phillips. And that was a sci-fi Christmas romance. The first one in that series was Krampus and the Crown, which I actually really enjoyed, which was a play on the Krampus myth. And this one was a play on like St. Nicholas. I thought that was a really cute story. And I really, yeah, I, I really like that little series Honey Phillips has going. I'm looking forward to what I assume will be the next one next year, because there was an allusion to another alien who had crash landed on this planet. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But that was really cute and a good palette cleanser. And then two things I'm actively working on. One is Disfigured by Amanda Leduc. This is my audiobook right now. So I have been listening to this and so far, really good, very thought provoking. Um, I've read a lot of sort of like literary studies about fairy tales. And I've also read feminist thinking about fairy tales. But it is very interesting to hear about fairy tales from a disability rights activist kind of perspective. Yeah, so I'm, this is very thought provoking. I'm enjoying it. And then I think I might start The Clockwork Sparrow by Catherine Woodfine. This was a gift from Leanna because she ordered the series and accidentally got two. She sent me a copy of this series and she was telling me that she just finished this and she thought it was really cute and light, um, which sounds good. I think I'm still sort of in a, a little bit of a palette cleansing space from The Mad Ship just because that was such an emotional read. So I think maybe this might be up next. This would be good, I feel like, to for a day where I'm not feeling awesome. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'll let you guys know. Feeling better, thinking that we may have just seen the booster doing its thing in real time. So I'll catch you guys later. I'm gonna say that this is 9.5 out of 10 loafing. Right, buddy? I'm gonna see your tail a little bit, but I think it's a pretty good loaf. Alrighty, I finished The Sinclair Mysteries, The Clockwork Sparrow by Catherine Woodfine. And this was really, really cute. It's very charming. It's a lot of vibes. So basically it is set in sort of like Edwardian England. And we are following our main character, Sophie, who is an orphan who's going to work as a shop girl in this department store, in the hat department. And she meets some new friends and they thwart a robbery gone wrong situation at the department store and hijinks ensue. It's the first in four books and the villain is this guy called the Baron who escapes their clutches this time. So I assume that we will live to fight him another day. This was super cute. I don't know that this is like the strongest mystery that I've ever read for middle grade. Like I said, it's a lot of vibes and a lot of just like charming delightfulness. And as kind of like a lovely light palette cleansing kind of book, it definitely hit the spot. So yeah, I mean, I don't know that I would have continued in the series if I didn't already have the other ones. But since I do, I think like whenever I'm in the mood for something sort of just light and frothy, you know, I'll, I'll pick up the next one. So good times. I can definitely see why Leanna thought I would like this. I'm a little surprised she liked this as much as apparently she did. 
but I appreciate her sending me the series because definitely enjoyed this one. So yeah, that's the book I finished. I am working on, I probably will finish up tonight, uh, Snowden with the Alien Warrior or Warlord, something like that. I don't know. Uh, it's basically about like, it's like Christmas alien romance. Gonna love it. So uh, yeah, I think that's what I'll read tonight. And then in terms of what I'm gonna read next, um, still chugging my way through this on audio. It's going well. And then I think I'm gonna, well, I need to finish my Laura Lippman one, which I think I might be able to do tomorrow. And then I might start Fat by Sander Gilman. We'll see. So anyway, reading update. Things are still super quiet at work, which I'm very thankful for because I have definitely not been feeling my best this week. So it helps that work is as unstressful as it possibly could be, which I definitely needed. So um, yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. Another day, another dollar. Not feeling great today. Not sure if it's, I don't know why, I'm just tired. Could be autoimmune disease, having some tummy trouble, but I am gonna make myself some very bland pasta because <laughs> that's like my go-to food when I'm having a little flare. Make myself some tea and uh, keep listening to Disfigured. So I think I may, let them know I'm logging off early from work. I'm feeling pretty rough today, but anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so we are at the end of the day and I've actually gotten a lot of reading done. I finished two books and actually I realized, hi Marple, I just woke Marple up from her nap and she is giving me stink eye. I just realized I didn't actually tell you guys about Snowden with the Alien Warlord, which I read or I read and finished last night. So that one was actually really good. It's by Nancy Cummings. <laughs> whose name always, I'm just like, huh, Cummings, because I'm a 12 year old boy in my heart. I always really like her sci-fi romances, but they are not in Kindle Unlimited, and I don't like them enough to pay like four bucks a pop for them. So whenever they go on sale, I scoop them up, and this one was really good, I enjoyed it. it it's not, none of them are ever like revolutionary in their concept, but I think she just executes on sci-fi, marriages of convenience and fated mates, that trope. I think she just does it pretty darn well, um, better than a lot of people who are working in that genre. And this particular one was a woman who survives in an alien invasion apocalypse kind of situation. She is like hunkered down in her family's basement, but it's really cold and snowy. And she's trying to get over this bridge to get to the human like where the rest of the humans are, but she doesn't know that one of the good aliens who's like allied with Earth has scented her 
and knows that she's his mate. He saves her from one of the bad aliens, he gets knocked out, so she pulls him into her house and, you know, they're snowed in together, but the sci-fi version. It was fun. I wish Nancy Cummings would put her books into Kindle Unlimited so I could read more, but that was fun. Then I finished my audiobook, which I was also following along with in the physical book, which I really enjoy doing when I can. I like listening to the audio and underlining things in the physical copy. That's always nice. I finished this as my audio, and then this evening I finished this as my physical book that I was reading. So really like both of these. These are both gonna get four stars. So actually, I think that might put both of these in my surprise category here at the end of the month. But this one, it was very, it had, had a lot of like kind of establishing theoretical conversations about how different activists and academics conceptualize sort of like disabled people's way of being in the world. There's a lot of conversation about different models of disability. So like a medical model versus a psychological model. And then it's all integrated into some memoir from the author and then integrating those ideas into different fairy tales. And we learn about some rad fairy tales and I'd never heard of Hans my Hedgehog or the Maiden Without Hands, but I enjoyed both of those. You know, it also talks about like Disney and Marvel and there's a chapter about Beauty and the Beast, which is one of my favorites. Angela Carter shows up in here. There's a lot of here in here to like. I don't know that all of the elements, the content in this is fantastic. As a book, I don't know that all of those elements were incorporated as successfully as like the best nonfiction I've ever read, but I still think that this was super enjoyable and very thought provoking. Yeah, I'm gonna be using this for a commentary video. So I'm definitely glad I read it. I forget. I know I saw Books and Lala recommend this and then I feel like a few other of my friends have read this and have enjoyed it. But anyway, I would definitely recommend this. I think it was very thought provoking. I really liked it. The audio was fine. Yeah, just all around. This was definitely a worthwhile read. If not like the best nonfiction of all time, I think content wise, this was really good. So I definitely enjoyed that as my audiobook. The TV just changed into screensaver. So you get a nice blue glow from me now. And then I also finally finished Seasonal Work by Laura Lippman, which is a collection of short stories that are all sort of like mystery thriller based. And I will definitely read more from Laura Lippman. This was my first encounter with her work. I really like these short stories. Now, because it's a collection, the hard thing about a short story collection is that it can be difficult for me to give more than four stars because almost all the time there's a couple of stories that aren't as good. So it's always, I feel like it's very hard to rate these collections because I really liked several of the stories in here. The titular story was really good. My favorite story was actually one called Slow Burner. There's a very creative use of catnip in one of these stories. Yeah, all around like this, I really liked kind of the themes of the collection and sort of the attitude of the author in the story. I feel like there's a lot of stuff about feminism in this and sort of, I feel like there's a lot of commentary about aging women. I really like this collection a lot. I don't know that it's like the best. This, I mean, I feel similarly about both of these. They're really good. Are they the best of their kind I've ever read? No, are they all time favorites? No, but like really good, really solid, really enjoyed this and will definitely seek out more from this author. So I, I consider that to be exciting success. She, her recurring detector is Tess Mognahan. You can tell that I didn't have to actually pronounce that last name until right the second. Apparently she is a recurring detective and maybe I'll look for a book featuring her. But all that to say, I really like this author's actual writing. And this is a successful experiment. I often say I like to try short stories when I can from authors because it gives me a chance to get a sense of what their writing is like before committing to a full novel. And uh, I think what I'm taking away is that her actual prose is very nice. These stories at least were all very character driven, which is something that tends to work for me across the board in fiction. So two successful books, I guess, let's see here. I've got two days left in 2021. I've already decided that my last book Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. All of the starish shaped ornaments and all the ones that resemble some kind of like stuffed toy are just very high temptation factors for sweet baby Hastings. Okay, what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay, so I have two days left in the year. I don't know what my last new book is gonna be. I've decided that on the 31st, that is gonna be the day I reread Allegiance of Honor. So I already know that's gonna be my last read of the year because that way I can go ahead and film. I can film like wrap up stuff on that day. So I will find out tomorrow 
based on my mood, what my last new read of the year is gonna be. And I am guessing literally no meetings tomorrow and everybody is out of the office already tomorrow. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have some time to read. That's my guess. I don't really have a lot I've gotta do tomorrow at work anyway. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get a good chunk of reading time and we'll figure out what I'm in the mood to read and that will be my last new read of the year. So stay tuned for that. We'll find out together what my mood will be to end the year off on. Hey besties! I am feeling a lot better today. Um, I don't know if that was COVID or just like a cold. I'm on part of my autoimmune disease treatment are immune system suppressants. So it really, I don't know. It could just be I had a cold and this is the first cold I've had while on this medicine and I, we just don't know. Who knows? All, all I know is I'm feeling a lot better today. And if it was COVID, I'm very, very thankful that my booster seemed to have done its thing because I never tested positive for it. So it's keeping the load pretty small. It's time to pick my last read of the year, my last new read of the year. So let's go look at the shelf and see what I'm in the mood for, shall we? So we got plenty of options. <laughs> This isn't even all of them. Oh my gosh, this is awful. Okay, you know, I kind of feel like a mystery would be nice or like a thriller of some kind. So why don't we focus on this shelf? Cause this is most, no, this is all mysteries. I think mysteries are where I tend to hoard books the most because like a lot of them sound good to me. So I'll just grab them with no plan of how they're gonna get read. Um, okay, so these toxic things is a new one that just came out. That's about, I think she finds something at an estate sale and people wanna kill her for it. Magpie murders might be fun. That's like a meta, kind of story. The Maidens was very polarizing this year, so I think that would not necessarily be a good one to end the year on. Any of these sound like they are pickling my fancy. So far, these are the two that are standing out. Let's look up here. I don't really see, none of these are really jumping out at me. Let's come over here. Well, this one jumps out at me. Okay, so I've got three that I think we'll choose between. We got all her little secrets. We've got these toxic things and we've got magpie murders. I do like my nice little red color scheme here. These are both conspiracy. This is like a meta whodunit kind of situation. You know, I think we're gonna go with this cause this is more like true murder mystery situation and it's been on my TBR the longest. So I think maybe we're gonna give this a try. I put picked this up and put this down once already, but it's cause I didn't quite know what I was getting in for. So I'm hoping now that I know what I'm getting in for, it'll be more successful. So I think that's, that's what we're gonna do today. I'm trying out a new red for New Year's, also enjoy my zip patches. I think you've seen in this vlog, I live my life in zip patches basically. But anyway, working on Magpie Murders, enjoying it so far, definitely coming to it with the right expectations has helped me get into it a lot more. So I'm planning on finishing it today, so I'll check back in when I've made some more progress. Okay, I come to you about halfway done with this. It feels like it is midnight, but it is only six o'clock. So I definitely have enough time to finish this tonight. Thoughts so far, I really like this. I think this is gonna be a poster child for don't try to make yourself read something when you're not in the mood for it, because you might like it if you were in a better mood for it. I was in the mood for this, and therefore I'm liking this very much. So the way that this book is structured, how many, I don't even know how many pages this is, okay. Hold please format. I've read like 213 pages so far, and then it starts its numbering over again because it's like a book within a book situation. There's another 236 pages. Okay, 
So there's a book within a book. There's like five-ish pages that start off the novel. And we have this woman who is reading the latest novel from this dude who writes the Atticus Pund books, which are very clearly meant to be a take on Hercule Poirot, except he's German rather than Belgian. And I mean, it's very clear. His sidekick's name is Fraser, as in Hugh Fraser, who plays the Hastings sidekick on the Poro ITV series. Chubb is the chief inspector instead of Jap. It's like very clearly meant to be an homage. I will say this reminds me of how much I just love the Christie prose. And so I, I quickly stopped trying to think of it as a take on Christie, though it does also have a lot of her tropes. Hund gets brought into this because there's a young woman who wants to marry this young guy, but there's like a specter of suspicion around him. And therefore she doesn't think they're gonna be able to get married, which is a very Christy thing. It's set in this little village called Sexby on Avon. And there's like a main house called Pie Hall. It's all very Christy. So the first chunk of this is that novel. It's set in the fifties. Everybody hates the Lord of the Manor. He's very hateable. There was also the death of the housekeeper of the manor who was also very hateable. And we're trying to figure out who done it. I decided not to think of it as a Christy thing, even though as discussed, it is very Christie-esque. I'm trying to think of it as more a take on the Midsummer Murders because Anthony Horowitz did write some of those early episodes, which were iconic. So I'm trying to imagine it as like a Midsummer Murders episode situation. So I really enjoyed that. Now we're gonna cut back to Editor Lady, who we met at the very beginning of the book. And basically I don't think the book cuts off like right before we're gonna get the solution to the book within the book. And it seems like she also doesn't have those pages and now something else is gonna happen in the real world. So I'm gonna have some dinner and then I'm gonna polish this off. But so far really enjoying this as a old fashioned whodunit with a lot of tropes that I know and love, with a lot of characters that I know and love, very nicely written. I think I've read at least one other thing from Anthony Horowitz so that doesn't surprise me. He's a very clear, compelling writer, so dinner, then I'll finish this, and this will be my last new book of 2021. Well, ended up loving this. I was kind of worried, not gonna lie, because I, I don't know, anytime you have like the equivalent of a dual timeline, you definitely have the risk that I'm not gonna like one and I'm gonna like the other. But in this case, I liked both. I will say that the resolution to the real world mystery, the motive of it was a little off for me. There were moments that didn't like fully work for me in this book, but Overall, this is such a satisfying and fun whodunit, and it's an actual mystery. I don't know, it's so hard to find actual just like straight up mysteries that get published these days, I feel like. I mean, like you get them in the cozy genre, but I'm just not that into cozies, contemporary ones anyway, so it's just hard for me to find ones that are just straight up mysteries, and this is definitely just a straight up mystery. There were so many shout outs to Agatha Christie in particular that were fun for me to see. I just really enjoyed this, and this was a really good note to end the year on in terms of new reads. So I think that that will do it for the vlog. Like I said, I'm gonna read Allegiance of Honor today, and I'm live streaming tonight for New Year's Eve, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll meet back with you guys just to wrap things up, but I think this is the last book we're gonna read together for this one. Okay, so just a quick wrap up of our reading for this vlog. This is maybe the most successful <laughs> vlog I've ever done just in terms of I happen to read a lot of things that I really really enjoyed which was pretty exciting so let's maybe let's go low to high so I guess looking at what all I read sorry I'm looking at my spreadsheet here to see what all I read because I read a lot I in the last week yeah Thursday from a Thursday to a Thursday so I guess technically eight days of reading I read one two three four five I read nine books now Granted, some of them were just sort of like short little whatevs, but still pretty impressive, all things considered. So, and my lowest rated books were three and a half stars. So I would say probably my lowest rated, but still enjoyed was Snowed In with the Alien Warlord by Nancy Cummings. I thought that that was a really fun, snowy sci-fi romance. Then I would say The Clockwork Sparrow by Catherine Woodfine, which I don't have in my little hands right now, but I would say that next which was a fun middle grade mystery set in like Edwardian England. Then I would say A Gift for Nicholas, 
by Honey Phillips, which was a Christmas sci-fi romance that was a lot of fun. So my lowest ones were all, those were all three and a half stars. Those were all good. Then going into my four stars, which I have all of those in physical form, I would say Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, which is coming out in March of 2022. And it's just like a fun small town romance. I liked that there was insecurity from the hero for once. And that was sort of his internal journey. I thought that was cool. Then I would say Seasonal Work by Laura Lippman, which was a collection of mystery thriller short stories. But really, I would say like general literary fiction with like a mystery plot. Very well written, very enjoyable. Then my top four star for this, I would say would be Disfigured by Amanda LaDuck, which was about the history of folk tales and fairy stories tell us about our perceptions of people with disabilities. So all of those were great. And then I would say I had two four and a halfs and one five star in a week. This might be like one of the best reading weeks I've ever had now that I'm thinking about this. So I would say Razor Blade Tears would be my bottom of this stack. Uh, which was a revenge conspiracy thriller. Really good. Audiobook is great. Recommend that. Then I would say my last book of the year, which was Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz, four and a half stars, really good mystery whodunit. And then The Mad Ship by Robin Hobb, which was a five star. Now, granted, I've been reading this all month, so I didn't read all of it that week, but still. Pretty fantastic reading. And then I'm going to end my year with Allegiance of Honor as a reread. Anyway, thanks for coming along for this sort of cozy Christmas slash end of the year vlog. I enjoyed doing this. So let me know what you thought of any of the books I talked about, or let me know how your end of 2021 reading went in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.